Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warships with Captain Keys. Now, as promised, I uh, wanted to do a, an overview of some of the ships that I've been featuring, specifically since it's ranked season, um, the Tier 6 American Destroyer Farragut seems like a good option. Now, the Farragut has utility outside of just ranked season. It's a great random battle destroyer as well, but it really shines in ranked season because, as I've been stressing, the Farragut is a fantastic team play destroyer. Um, and there's a few reasons for this, but let's go over the basic stats of the ship, which haven't really changed very much. Um, and we're gonna, the model of these reviews is gonna be to hit those quickly, to give you the keys to victory, um, and not spending a lot of time just on grinding through the stats, because those really haven't changed in a very long time for the Farragut. Um, the only thing that's changed is other ships have been introduced, new mechanics like stealth fire removal have happened, so we need to get up to date on our Farragut. Starting off with survivability, 11,500 hit points, fairly standard for destroyers of this tier, nothing really remarkable here. Her guns, uh, she has five of them, they fire every four seconds, have a 180 degree turn time of 12 seconds, which is pretty darn good. Um, in fact, uh, it's the first one I think you get that's actually very good. Maybe the Nicholas before it was decent, but... Main battery firing range of 12.6 kilometers, not that you're going to be hitting very much at that range, but if you've got a stationary battleship, you can try and set some fires on him. Torpedoes? Eh. I mean, you do get um, eight of them, and they go 64 knots, which is good, but the fact that they are only 6.4 km range does limit the Farragut to uh, close-range torpedo engagements. Her AA? Pfft, no one cares. Um, it's tier 6, destroyers don't have functional AA yet. Maneuverability, 36.5 knots, very good speed. Um, with a speed flag and engine boost, you can get up to 42 temporarily, or 41 and change, so that's helpful. Good turning circle, 560, and a good rudder shift time. Her concealment, and this is the part that I mentioned in a previous video. I really didn't like about the Farragut. Um, well, just look, coming from the Nicholas... The Nicholas had a 6.7 kilometer stock detection range. That means with Concealment Expert, which now that we've shuffled around the commander skills is not that hard to get, and Camo, the Nicholas could get a surface detect range down of around like 5.8 or something. I mean, compare that to the Farragut, even with Concealment Expert and Camo, you can only get her down to, I think, 6.6, 6.7. So almost a full kilometer better on the Nicholas, um, and I, that was the single thing that really frustrated me about going from the Nicholas to the Farragut, because this is back when getting Concealment Expert required a 15-point captain, and getting a 15-point captain was a lot harder, so yeah. Anyway, so that's the stats of the Farragut. Um, in terms of upgrades, I like premium damage control. Um, I like definitely premium smoke. The premium engine boost isn't strictly necessary. So now, let me put my commander back on here, and let's talk about how to set up your Farragut in patch 0.6.7. Mr. Newton. Alright. Preventative maintenance, you don't want to lose your engines or your rudder, but if you do, last stand. This is a must-have for every single destroyer. I cannot think of a situation where um, I wouldn't want this. Every destroyer needs to have last stand, no exceptions. Um, if you don't, you will be caught in situations where you wish you did, and last stand will make the difference. I expect survivability expert just because, well, I wanted to get to concealment, and none of the other tier 3 perks really help the Farragut. I mean, vigilance, uh, arguably, but not as important as survivability expert, I think. That's an extra, what, uh, 350 times 6 is 2100 extra hit points, so that's helpful. And finally, of course, Concealment Expert to get you down to that lovely, lovely 6.6. .6. Um, I already had the Farragut before the... Uh, I don't remember what campaign it was. Was it the Christmas Convoys campaign? Anyway, but I did get the Permacamo for it during that, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And now we can see our 6.6 .6 KM detection range, which is very, very um, competitive. Shinonome and Anshan have like 6.3 6 for the Anshan, and I think Shinonome can get maybe 5.9 or something, but um, Farragut is still very useful down around those concealments. So once you get these four, I would say probably the next thing you would want to go for 
Well, it depends. If you want to be a team player, and you're doing a lot of ranked and division play with it, then I think the next one I would go for would be Smokescreen Expert. Because your job um, as USDD is to lay long lines of smoke to cover your allies. And Smokescreen Expert makes them even bigger, so your allies have more room to maneuver and they're less likely to get hit by torpedoes. After you get Smokescreen Expert, um, probably Vigilance, again, just to get out in front, spot torpedoes for your team. Um, again, this is a very team play oriented destroyer build I'm showing you here. And so that would be, let's see, 13, 15, you'd have four points left. Um, again, for team play, probably radio location, I would say. Um, if you have an, I mean, if you have a 19 point captain on your Farragut, that's pretty substantial. But yeah, probably radio location because um, that would let you know if someone's sneaking up on you. Now again, this would make the Farragut a powerful destroyer in its own right, but these benefits all scale tremendously with team play. Team play, team play, team play. That's what the Farragut is good at. That's why competitive teams at Tier 8 take the Benson. They don't really care about the Benson's gun power. They really want the Benson's smoke, good stealth, um, if specced for it, decent AA. Uh, but those are all support roles. That's what the Benson's for in competitive. And in ranked, that's really what the Farragut should be for, too. Um, if you didn't want to do that, and you wanted to go of a more, I'll say selfish, but, you know, I guess um, not team play oriented build, I'd start with the same four. Um, I'd probably go Adrenaline Rush um, for the faster gun and torpedo reload when you get hurt. Um, you don't need torpedo armament expertise, it just, eh, 10% isn't enough. Basic firing training would give you a little more uh, firepower. And then maybe Superintendent. Um, can you do that? 16. Yeah, you could. Okay. Uh, the other one for the team play oriented build, if you wanted to do this, you could go um, Smokescreen Expert and then Superintendent for the extra smoke. And then for your four pointer, um, you could go Radio Location or Vigilance and then just put your last point into Priority Target. So that might be a better option. The good news is you can kind of customize the Farragut how you want. It scales well with a lot of different builds, and I don't believe there's any one required build, unless you do something dumb like emergency takeoff, and then I'm going to think you're stupid. But but really, um, the Farragut can spec into a lot of different roles, and I think that's what I like so much about it. It's such a flexible ship, um, and it's good for helping out your allies. That's what it does. Uh, in terms of flags, if I'm going to run flags on the Farragut... Um, I would say I'm going to run the Speed Flag, uh, Sierra Mike. I would probably also run, um, if you want, the Fire Flags, if you're going to sit in the smoke and spam HE at things. Um, I, I tend to want to use these for my IJ and Cruisers. I don't like to burn through them that fast for American Destroyers. Uh, I would go Juliet Charlie, because the Farragut does tend to detonate, um, and in ranked, that's a big problem for your team. And those are really the only ones that are required. I mean... Arguably November Foxtrot for the faster fire on your smoke, um, you know, that could be helpful. But otherwise, nah, I don't really think you need much more. Modules, or upgrades rather, for the Farragut. Main Armaments Mod 1, um, again, simply because you don't want to lose any guns. Um, you don't want to lose your torpedo tubes either, and the other two just aren't very helpful. You don't have any auxiliary armaments. I mean, okay, a couple of AA guns that don't really matter. Aiming Systems Mod 1, um, again, your AA is pathetic, Doesn't don't bother extending the range, that actually just increases the range at which you can be detected, so you don't want that. Main Battery Mod 2, nope, your guns turn fast enough, you don't need that. I went with Propulsion Mod uh, for the Farragut. I, you could make the argument for either one of these, and since I'm running Last Stand, I guess I don't technically need either of them, but... You want to stay at speed. Losing your engine is a very bad thing. If you lose your steering, you've got last stand. You can still turn, kind of. But if you lose your engine, even with last stand, it cuts your speed down to upper 20s, low 30s, something like that. And finally, because of the phenomenal um, 2.7 second rudder shift time, I took Propulsion Mod 2. This allows you to really work those smoke screens. It lets you move forward, lets you move backward, lets you peek around islands and fire torpedoes and then get back quickly. Um, I really like Propulsion Mod 2. I think it's one of the most underused upgrades in the game. I put it on a couple of cruisers where everyone says, oh no, you have to use rudder shift. I really like Propulsion Mod 2. So um, that goes on my Farragut as well. 
And what do I get out of all this? Well, I've only got a 10-point captain, but it gives me a sneaky destroyer with good health. Um, and I've got preventative maintenance, so I won't take hits that often. I've got last stand, so if I do, I'm okay. It's very resilient. I've got premium smoke. Um, and it's a very good all-round team player. I really like the Farragut for that role. And that's how you should be playing it. If you want to sit at range, spam HE, and farm damage and stuff like that, go check out the Russian line, um, maybe the Anshan, or uh, maybe not even destroyers at all, because destroyers are so useful in team play, and if that's not really your thing, no judging, but you might not want to play destroyers. So anyways, this has been a 0.6.7 uh, July of 2017 recap on the Farragut, now that we're in ranked season. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this commentary and this update to a very old and reliable ship. Thank you very much for joining us. Good luck and fair seas.